Hey, how's it going? Happy Saturday night. I watched some movies, and I want to talk about them. And also just a casual reminder to please like and subscribe to my channel. Back to the video. So I watched a couple of Martin Campbell mo movies today. If you've never heard of the guy, you've definitely heard of his movies. Maybe a movie like Casino Royale or Goldeneye Strikes a Bell. Or maybe a movie like The Mask of Zorro and that other shitty Zorro movie. Or maybe uh, probably his best well-known work at won many Oscars, Green Lantern. Yeah, he's had some hit and misses. But he's definitely been prolific enough that it's been a director that I've enjoyed seeing his career over time. And it was definitely uh, one of my goals, so to speak, digital goals. I have many of them. To cross off some of these movies. And I decided today sounds like a very good idea, day, to cross off some of those movies. So let's jump in. I watched three of them. Two were, one was great, one was okay, and the other one was a typical Martin Campbell flop. So let's begin with the first one that I watched today, and that was Protégé. Now, Protégé, hmm, um, wait, hang on, did I get the, oh, it's called The Protégé, not Protégé. So, The Protégé, this movie came out in 2021, starring Maggie Q and Sam Jackson, and who's the other old guy? Um, the guy who played, there we go, the guy who played Batman, and also the vulture, Michael Keaton. It was, it was okay. It was an okay film. It was a action-ish, look, there was a lot of action, it was very well done. There was a lot of espionage, um, some like slick kind of cinematography. The only issue really that I had with it was you really had to stretch your imagination of believability and realism if you really just wanted to enjoy it. If, you, if you're looking for something more like a born trilogy kind of action, espionage, spy thriller, action cool sequences that kind of look realistic, but... Well, I mean, yeah, they kind of look realistic. Uh, you're not going to get that with The Protégé. The Protégé is definitely more of a, like, for example, if a dude gets shot with a shotgun, he flies like five meters back. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, a couple of other things, like you're dealing with, a, with like a female, um, a female hero protagonist who might as well pretty much just have godlike super superpower ability, superhuman um, nature. I mean, this woman can jump off a building holding onto uh, a red hose and um, know exactly the length of that hose to make sure that she won't fall splat on the ground. Uh, fortunately, that hose had just enough length in it to uh, to make sure that she'd reach there safely. Just a couple of other things in that film that really just stretched the, the, the nature of believability. Like... Um, so many like inconsistent like action action like threads you know it's like the the dumbest villains imaginable that's that's the only thing that, that i can really say about this film it was the dumbest villains and and like henchmen imaginable because they just went down so quickly and you could have taken this chick out very quickly anyways in terms of critique aside let's just go over story um sam jackson Finds a girl who uh, has has just gone through like a troubled past in Vietnam. Decides to take uh, this this girl in to the secret underground world of uh, being a contract killer hitman. This girl go grows up with all the skills of Sha Sam Jackson, pretty much, and now um, goes on a vengeance quest when Sam Jackson dies, or does he? Uh, it might not necessarily be a spoiler because that's pretty much what Sam Jackson does in practically all of his movies sometimes. Um, and then, yeah, the bad guys die and the hero wins somehow. I, I don't know, with two bullets in your body and a contract killer staring you down in the face and the like ridiculous superpower ability to cross and then cry an entire two-story building in the matter of five seconds, and then just walk out unscathed, even though you're still very much bleeding, and you've been bleeding out the entire, like, evening. Credits, end credits. Martin Campbell, another film. 
done by him. So, so th- that was the protege. It was okay. I liked the action, but, uh, yeah, the plot line. I, I'm glad that we got some good actors there. Plot, yeah. Think of it more if you go into that film thinking of it as like a, this is a what a cartoon action or a yeah like a like a cartoon comic book type of action movie with realism actors so it's not animated then you'll probably enjoy it so that was the protege next film i watched was the previous film that martin campbell did let me go to my wikipedia page and tell you all about it 2017 this film came out it was called The Foreigner. Now, you may not know the film The Foreigner, but you most definitely know the starring actor, Jackie Chan. And let me tell you something, folks. This was a great film. It was... Plot line. Let's start with the plot. Okay, so we have Jackie Chan and the antagonist, who you also might know as one James Bond, um... Back in back in the old good nineties two thousands, Pierce Brosnan. So Pierce Brosnan is a politician, but also ex terrorist of a Ireland based terrorist group. Now I don't know anything about politics, so to speak. I'm just I'm just, and I'm also the kind of person who I just want to watch a, a film and not necessarily have to go through an entire history book to understand the film. So history buffs or t- 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 or like modern history buffs, if you've come to this channel and you're watching this, guys, I really don't care. I'm just here to watch a movie and have a good time. So, P.S. Brosnan is this politician and also an ex-terrorist leader of some Ireland-based terrorist group. And in this period of time, this uh, group is pretty much, uh, they've toned down on the violence and they now just do like, just uh, like you can shrug off kind of these violent acts that they do because um, in order to avoid serious repercussions and lots of of the gang members getting sent to prison and like massive police raids, etc., 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 P.S. Brosnan pretty much said, okay, guys, I'm the leader. We'll do this in like a kind of official manner and that way no one will get hurt until a young renegade group of this gang decide to blow shit up. And they blew up a building. And unfortunately, they fucked with Jackie, Tan- Jackie Chan's daughter. <laughs> so Jackie Chan's daughter dies in this building. And that sets off Jackie Chan going into mad vengeance mode. Um, it's only later revealed in the film that Jackie Chan... Uh, I can't remember the actual name of the guy. It's, it's like Quan or something. Um... But for for argument's sake, it's Jackie Chan. Because when you watch a Jackie Chan movie, it's always Jackie Chan, right? So Jackie Chan turns out he's this ex-Special Forces, super elite um, army man. And he he starts off, his character starts off as just like this humble dude. You know, like he's, he's done. He's an ex-veteran of the army. He's done with that life. Now he's just like a humble Chinese guy managing a shop. He wants the best for his daughter, and his daughter dies very quickly. And now um, he goes on this vengeance quest, essentially, because this daughter was his last remaining family member. His previous family had also died. And, ooh, hang on a second. I need a jump cut. Okay, so I did say that I needed to jump cut, but actually then I remembered in my head it's probably better for me to actually do the thing that I wanted to do, which was the like and subscribe uh, part at the beginning of the video. So I'm just going to film that separately and put that in the beginning of the video. But at least now I can continue my trail of thought without you having to re-watch me do this whole spiel again. So let's get back to it. Jackie Chan started off as this humble dude and daughter dies and now he's and now he's super Rambo vengeance man. And he goes after the Pierce Brosnan character literally just because that is his first lead. So imagine, like, you're, you're the first lead, and you're just some, like, average Joe thug, and you have this absolute Rambo machine of a monster coming after you. That isn't the case with Pierce Brosnan. He isn't the average Joe thug. He's, uh, he turns out to be actually the leader. He may not have been the person involved with the small little group of uh, misfits who decided to start their own bombing, but 
because he's the leader and because he speaks to all the other leaders, he therefore is actually the right guy. So, you know, Martin Campbell, I guess, circumstantial things happen and that's why there's action in his direction. But uh, I think probably the best thing that I can say about this film is just seeing Jackie Chan at his best. Um, I haven't seen a Jackie Chan movie in so long, to be honest. I don't know what he has been doing in the 2010s, if he did do anything, or the late 2000s. But my fondest memory of the Jackie Chan films, probably similar to you, uh, would be the Rush Hour films. And, you know, all the different things that he did in between. And then... Or what was that movie in the Wild West? Um, I cannot remember for the life of me. Something with um, Owen, somebody. You go, whatever. It's this film, <laughs> not the sequel. Um, but that, yeah, those films are great. I haven't seen his 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 uh, original stuff as well, the police stories. But anyways, re- tangent aside about Jackie Chan. As soon as in, I suppose, mid-2000s, um, CG cinema started to take over, and then all of a sudden, instead of seeing actual stunt effect work, um, I remember the movie um, called The Tuxedo. That movie was kind of the, oh, man, I'm really not excited about Jack Chan movies anymore, film for me, because, you know, CG work just kind of killed it. I like the effect, I like the, the, I like the, the ability of a man to hone his craft, as a stunt performer, as an action star, and doing all these like all these different moves in this action sequence, and you can't make a mistake. You know, it has to be so well rehearsed. And then all of a sudden, it's just CG takes over, and you know what's really the point? That's kind of what I've been seeing with um, a lot of the Marvel films as well. I uh, <laughs> tangent aside. So that was the film. Jackie Chan takes on Pierce Brosnan. And there's lots of violence as well. That's another thing that I fucking loved about that film. It was great to see a violent uh, Jackie Chan. Like blood and guts and and all the different things happened there. You know, this was definitely not a children's film for a reason. And it inspired me to want to do a Jackie Chan marathon, to be honest. So, he's got a lot of films. And I'm the kind of guy who likes to take on marathons. So, maybe one day, one day we will see a Jackie Chan marathon video coming from me but until then let's get to the last film that i watched by martin campbell and it was by far the worst one it was also a very recent one the film is called memory it came out last year it stars liam neeson the photo of uh the photo or the poster of the film is liam neeson holding a gun and i just can't really after seeing the taken film I think I saw Taken 2. I did not see Taken 3. I can't really take Liam Neeson seriously anymore. Every time I see him as an action star with a gun, I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to watch another Taken film, to be honest. And that's kind of exactly what I experienced in this film, except with a twist. And the twist is Liam Neeson is an old... Okay, so here's the plot line, right? Liam Neeson is the hitman guy. He's smooth. He's slick. He does the Liam Neeson voice, but the twist is that he's actually really old now, and he's subject to forgetting things, which might be a problem if you're an assassin. So, this is not a comedy, let me tell you that, first and foremost. This is supposed to be an action film. Um, I see it's based on a novel. It's a remake. There were a whole bunch of different remakes for this thing. Uh, Guys... What can I tell you? This, if you've ever seen like a like a CSI episode or or you know like one of those forty minute episodes of a series where it's where it's like very cliched policemen s- standing around like computers and solving a case and then like going up and interrogating a whole bunch of different like one off cast members like the grocer or the person who works in the box bookshop who maybe had a relation with the victim. And they give their sassiness and then maybe give a clue. And it's like, okay, guys, we need to solve the clue. That's kind of what, what this film was. Because you had Liam Neeson, the assassin guy, doing his contract kills. And then you had the police guys who were investigating the kills. And eventually, the two meet. There's a gun battle. 
and they kind of strike a deal because it turns out that the Liam Neeson assassin guy is trying to kill the big boss of all these different things and he's just discovered who the big boss is and all the police people are trying to discover who the big boss is. They figure out together by talking, blah, 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 blah. Liam Neeson dies, but he, but but before he dies, he then remembers where he hid this special piece of evidence, which is incredibly circumstantial, like, um, yet again. And, like, it's just hidden in a light somewhere in, in like, public street view. Um, yes, it's an abandoned building, but it's still a very publicly accessible street. Uh, you know, there was nothing stopping a whole bunch of, like, street kids, with, like, one day, like, throwing, like, a rock at, like, the thing where the window is, where the flash stick is. It was just, it was a silly movie. And I'm so glad that I didn't pay money in the cinema to go and see this film. Um, but yeah, that was the Martin Campbell trilogy of films that I watched today. And my um, career as a film critique and reviewer has just gone down the toilet. But that's uh, that's the thing about uh, YouTube. You can say whatever you want and some, how some people might find it actually enjoyable. And that's how an audience is built from there. So um, there was one other film that I watched. I don't really think it's relevant to the grander scope of today's video. But if you made it this far and if you're enjoying what... I'm talking about so far, then I will end this segment for today with the final film that I watched. Um, I didn't watch the whole thing. I just watched the ending of it. It was called Ex Machina. Ex Machina. I hope that I sp actually said that one correctly. Ex Machina. Film. So this film was very interesting. My trading, my financial trading coach said that this was one of the films that he gave like a list of films that his students should be watching. This was back when I started with him about four, maybe five years ago. This was one of the films and I'm finally only got into it now. This film is about a nerd dude programmer who works in a big te tech corporation company and he wins a lottery to go see the founder and chill with the founder of this big, gigantic Google-ish tech company. It's like sometime in the future-ish, um, but not too far in the future. It's like maybe 10, 15 years from now kind of future. And he wins this company lottery to go and spend uh, like two weeks with the founder of this company at this um, exclusive woodland hideaway. It's very high tech, very secretive. Uh, like the dude gets dropped off in a helicopter and gets told to walk the way and gets like a special like pass card key that can only access certain doors, etc. And this um and this this founder, this like stupid trillionaire billionaire kind of guy, he's like very like muscled up, very like geeky, kind of, like very like assertive personality, but also like very um off off the hook, so to speak. You know, like. You, it's very common in in as these two as these two guys are getting to know each other. It's very common that you'll see th this um, tech billionaire guy like start his day with like pump up workouts and like he's chick. We'll talk about the chick, um, and then like in the evening, just like smoke a lot of dope, drink a lot, and pass out somewhere in the house somewhere, and then in the and then in between have like very intellectual slash also very assertive like these are my opinions speak straight to me dude uh, who i've invited to my house because my time is very valuable so like very egotistic as well but anyways so we have nerd guy who won the lottery and is now at the house and we have tech billionaire guy and they having a conversation now they're not just there by accident there's a third important character in this film and that is a robot it's a female robot so female robot that's her name and this female robot is powered by, by ai and the whole purpose of nerd guy being here is that tech billionaire wants nerd guy to every day speak to ai robot female chick and ask questions and really test to see if basically how do you feel when you speak to an ai uh, do you feel like you're speaking to a real person? So that's the plot. I, may, I might have been a little bit comedic about this, but this film is actually, it's actually brilliant. And I really 
recommend you watching it. Like, if you're looking for a very good action film, watch The Far No, the Jackie Chan film. If you're watching, if you're looking for a very good sci-fi film, something that has drama and a little bit of mystery, some twists and turns, some things that you weren't really gonna like expecting to see coming, but it came, um, then definitely check out Ex Machina. I'm the kind of person who loves films that get you to think. And this is definitely one of those films. Those kind of films are very rare. They're few and far between. This film is definitely one of them. Because it's not just you're watching it passively. The questions that are being asked are kind of like in the sessions between Nerd Guy and Female Robot. It's kind of like the questions are being asked to the audience. And because now we're living in the breakthrough of AI in this world, you can definitely get uh, get the feeling of like you can correlate uh, the questions to to like really what's happening now. Because keep in mind, this movie came out in twenty fourteen. Um, so, so yeah, there are. L- I think this is this is definitely a film that I don't want to spoil for you because of the drama, because of the twists and turns. Definitely worth checking out if that's your kind of film. Um, I would say go in blind. I didn't. I don't think I watched the trailer for it, but the poster intrigued me enough, and I would definitely say that this is also not necessarily a, a film that you'd want to watch with kids around. Um, there are some scenes that, I, I, although I wouldn't necessarily say disturbing, I would definitely say are not for kids towards the latter half of the film. So. All that said, that was my Saturday night. And now I have to edit this video and make a whole bunch of other videos. But it was a Saturday well spent nonetheless because I got to do the things that I got that I love to do. So I will see you Sunday. Peace out. Okay, I want to show you just how ridiculous this jank camera setup that I've got going on over here. I'm going to pick up a proper tripod tomorrow, but just look at this. Look at this. Can you see that? That is an actual camera tripod connected with a yoga mat elastic and my camera. And then on the back, there's like tape. That's what I've been working with for years. (laughs) So I'm going to get a proper tripod tomorrow.